When people are about to face something difficult, they often say sentences like, you can do it, it's not rocket science. It always makes me smile, because it is all about rocket science for me, every day. I am a space engineer specialized in propulsion, the so-called rocket science, and I am the CEO of a company focusing on space deployable structures. As a space engineer, I talk every day about topics such as missions to other planets, rockets, or satellites. But when interacting with people outside the space environment, the reaction is, of is often, oh, you must be so smart. Are you going to be an astronaut? Are you going to the moon? This question always leaves me a bit puzzled, because it would be like asking a fitness coach, so are you going to be an Olympic athlete? or someone into politics. So are you going to be the next president? I'm all for dreaming big and working hard, but being a space engineer, it's not exactly the same job as being an astronaut. Another question that I've heard many times is, why do we spend money to go to space when we have so many problems here on Earth? What's the usefulness? Over the years, I've heard these questions so many times that they really made me realize how much space is still a very misunderstood field. It is considered afar from our routines, with no impact on people's life and a too technical environment when only few smart people, the rocket scientists, can work. They like to make calculations and talk about two difficult topics. I have two questions for you here with me today. How many of you think you've had something to do with space this morning? Please raise your hands. Okay. Now, how many of you used Google Maps or another navigation app in your phone, in your car, to reach the venue today? Okay, many more people. <laughs> so if you raised your hand to both of these questions, you might already know the connection between the two topics. If you don't, if you didn't raise your hand or only to the second question, then I'm happy you're here with me today to discover that we are all space users. If you recently checked the weather forecast, if you made a bank transfer, if you made a video call, then you used space technology and its infrastructure. If you used the social media, maybe Instagram, maybe today, posting a story to say that you are here in Prague at this event, then you used data from satellites. Then you are space users. From the dawn of civilization, humankind has always been interested in space. Ancient populations, for example, used the stars to sail, built cities based on astronomical events. We have been drawn to space and the unknown to answer questions like, where do we come from? What is above our heads? But nowadays, space is so much more. If it wasn't for space exploration, research and innovation, we wouldn't have expanded our knowledge and advanced many technologies that are improving our life on Earth. The areas in which space technology and the derived services are benefiting societies are countless. Health, medicine, transportation, computer technology, and so many more. Space has entered our homes, our lives. It has changed our routines, the way we live, and the way we interact with each other. And sometimes we are not even aware of it. I want to show you some examples. So I asked you today if you use Google Maps or another navigation app to reach the venue. Every time we use the location on a device, we use the Global Positioning System, also known as GPS, which relies on satellites. We all like a good night of sleep, don't we? NASA developed memory foam in the 70s while trying to make airline pilot seats more comfortable and adaptable to people of different weights and sizes. And it also used it on board the space shuttle. We all know what a selfie is, right? The majority of digital cameras, like the ones that we have on our phones, 
are based on a type of sensor called CMOS, which was invented while NASA was working on miniaturizing cameras for interplanetary missions. Did you know that dust busters were initially conceived to collect samples on the moon? And then frying pans, athletic shoes, artificial limbs, baby formulas, and so many more. Astronauts on board the International Space Station often work on medical experiments that help researchers to better understand our human body. Thanks to the absence of gravity, they can work on discoveries that otherwise would not be possible on Earth. And these discoveries have advanced many processes and procedures, like breast cancer detection, studies on bone and muscle loss, programmable pacemakers or cancer treatments. Satellites provide us with beautiful images of our planet. I mean, look at this, it's stunning, it's Australia. But these images are processed and analyzed also to retrieve a wide range of data and information which are used on many fields and applications. We use images and data from satellites, for example, to monitor coastlines, to track wildlife in the risk of extinction. We will use them to monitor climate change. Farmers can use them to know when to irrigate fields or know the status of the vegetation, the health but also to make processes more sustainable. Now, the internet. What would be our life be like without the internet, right? Still, do you know that almost half the population of the world doesn't have access to it when internet cannot be provided by cable? The solution are satellites, which can provide high-speed access to internet to anyone in any location in the world. Now, go and tell that little boy and little girl living in a faraway area that they do not have the right to remote education and free study material. Go tell those people whose houses are on fire that firefighters cannot intervene in a timely manner because they don't have exact information on the locations. And go tell those people who are in need of medical help that doctors do not find blood for transfusions because they don't have access to the internet and its databases because money spent to go to space is useless, right? I will now walk you through quite a frightening story, one of those that you do not want to see become a reality anytime soon. The story is titled A Day Without Satellites. Audience, meet Bill. Bill lives here in Prague. He has a normal job and a routine built over the years that he enjoys. As every other morning, he wakes up at 7 a.m. He gets up, goes to the bathroom, washes his face, brushes his teeth, and to check how to properly dress for the day, he checks the weather app in his phone to see if some rain is coming. Here, something strange happens, because the weather app in his phone is not working thinking that he just might need to update it. He decides to ignore it for the day, dress up with more layers just in case, and heads towards the kitchen to have his breakfast. While preparing it, he likes to watch some TV. So he turns it on, but the channels are not working. There is no satellite television, no live news or broadcasts. Quite annoyed that all of this is ruining his routine, he finishes his coffee and walks to his car. Today, he has to go meet some clients outside the city, so he needs the navigation device in his car to reach their facility. But guess what? It's not working. What can he do now? Quite worried that he might be late, he calls his colleague Jim to alert him of the situation. But the line is overloaded. He cannot reach him. Meanwhile, he starts to notice that people in the street seem quite confused. Police is driving with full alar alarms around the city. And that public transport is going crazy. The metro lines are crashing into each other. So what is going on? What is happening? 
CPO doesn't know about it yet because there are no broadcasts or live news to announce it, but chaos is spreading all over the planet. The armed forces of all countries are on high alert because the defense systems, which rely on satellites, have failed. Telephone calls based on satellites do not work. The shelves of the supermarkets will soon be empty because the majority of goods are delivered by air freight or ships. But planes cannot take off or land because the air traffic management relies on satellites. And ships cannot reach ports because they're based on satellite navigation. And even if the shelves were full, people could not withdraw money because ATMs would not work. Bank transfers would be frozen as timestamps would not be available. Breakdowns and blackouts would diffuse all around the world. On top of this, police, firefighters, relief services would be limited because they would not have any information about the people's location and also be limited on their communication systems. So the consequences of a, on a common and the society would be huge and unpredictable. Suddenly, Bill wakes up. It was all about dream. So with a heavy heart, he runs towards the TV, turns it on, and luckily, his favorite presenter is announcing the news for the day. He takes a deep, relieved breath, smiles, and starts to get ready for another day on this planet in this beautiful city. So how many of you still think you've had nothing to do with space this morning? Space technology is at the backbone of society as we know it today. It is a source of information. It is a source of adaptation, evolution. We are explorers by nature. We are passengers on this living spaceship that is Earth. Space challenges us to go beyond our limit to expand our horizon. It pushes us as humankind to go beyond and further develop, innovate. But it also teaches us to be humile as we are a little tiny dot in the universe. It teaches us that we can work together as one, as we did on the International Space Station, regardless of borders, of genders, of countries. It is a tool to protect our fragile and beautiful planet that hosts us and that we are slowly destroying. So you on the front row, you in the middle, you at the end, me, when going out tonight, let's have a look at the sky and be thankful for the relatively small amount of money that is spent for space. Next time that we hear someone saying that space is something afar, maybe while holding a phone with a camera, selfie camera, or apps using the location, let's tell them what we learned here today. Next time that someone says that money spent for space is useless, let's tell them the brief scary story of Bill, because we are reliant on space technology, because we are all space users. Thank you.